talk about first priorities and greatest roadblocks. If we had a Department of Peace now, what would that Department of Peace mm. consider its first priority? Uh, in this country and now across the globe, we continue to uh, issue licenses state by state for something, uh, for a way of doing business that's called a limited liability for profit corporations. Would a Department of Peace take this on and say, how can we create entities that conduct the business of life for us, that then take no responsibility for the outcomes of their way of doing business. Our militaries, all across the globe now, are essentially supporting the right of limited liability for profit corporations to bring us the goods by which we conduct our daily living. So on the one hand, if we keep licensing their existence, then we are inviting the problem they create. So I would think that one of our primary responsibilities right now is to get very focused on what do we do about limited liability for profit corporations and state by state and town by town start to say this town and this state will no longer license limited liability corporations, and what will we license in their stead, not non-businesses. You can continue to do business, but you'll have to toe a certain line of how you do business. Your corporate social responsibility is going to be defined very clearly. To me, that's one. The other clear priority right now to me is, as this panel very happily has addressed, is the role of women in society and culture. It's finally coming to a head where what we do as women is critical. And I'd like to ask this very seasoned audience of peace activists, how many of you have heard about Security Council Resolution 1325 on women, peace, and security? Now, forgive me for sounding uh, outraged, but I am outraged that a resolution that was passed unanimously, that includes the United States, it was passed unanimously in the Security Council in the year 2000, and it was brought to the Security Council when Zimbabwe was president of the Security Council in that rotating arrangement. And Bangladesh, so two brown-skinned third world nations brought to what? What is the Security Council? The Security Council is essentially a gathering of the wor world's largest militarists sitting there to uh, ostensibly prevent war. And to this council was brought some of the places of the world most torn up by war from their women saying, have you ever considered what war does to women and children? And under this resolution, 1325, on women, peace, and security, the Security Council said, go out and do a study for us and bring back your empirical data on what does happen to women and children as though this were mystery. <laughs> but in any case, the study was done and Ellen Sirleaf Johnson, who became the president of Liberia, was one of the women who did that study. Uh, uh, that study showed that, yes, indeed, although women are very seldom the decision makers that take us to war, we nonetheless pay the biggest price, especially in modern warfare, and, and our children and our families, and that then we are left to build the peace. It, it's up to women to then restructure society and provide whatever cultural uh, moorings are necessary to build this thing up again. So surely we should have a say in war. So this resolution then empowered women and said, women are empowered and should be empowered by their governments 
in every institution of governance. So this includes whether it's school boards, local police boards, the state government, the town boards, the national, federal governments, international agencies, wherever you are, empower women to, one, preempt war, two, if the situation has gone to war, to bring it to peace, three, develop peace building forces. Now, since this came out in 2000, I became aware of it. I started to work on it, and I built and built and built and built the organization for it till 2005, at which point I had to go back to India to look after my mother. So I left it in the capable hands of some very uh, key uh, women's organizations in this country, and I will not name them because uh, I will then shame them. So I will not name them. But I requested them that every time any woman is arrested for trying to bring about peace, that in the court she hold up that UN Security Council Resolution 1325 for Women, Peace and Security and to say, I am empowered under this and I am being thwarted by my government. My government is against. Now, it's not a treaty and it's not a law. It's only a resolution and you'll be told that by the legal experts all the time. It's not binding, it's only a resolution. But those resolutions become law by repeatedly bringing it up in court and standing up for it and working for it. So I would say that's a key priority. In terms of roadblocks, I think those limited liability corporate, uh, I mean, I come from India, and when we talk about the British Empire, I always remind people it was not the British who raped, pillaged, and murdered us. It was the British East India Corporation. Yeah. A limited liability for profit corporation that created the British Empire. So let's not forget history and let's not allow it to repeat itself so egregiously as it is doing up to now. Thank you so much. I'm sorry.